very warm welcome to our online service this morning. We are delighted that you're able to be with us. Over the next four Sundays, we're going to explore aspects of wholeness and healing from a Christian perspective. Today, David will speak on Shalom, the gift of wholeness, as we think about the gift of wholeness in body, mind and spirit. Over the following two Sundays, Lynn and Sam will lead us as we explore two outward signs of wholeness and healing in the New Testament. A touching place, the laying on of hands, and anointing, the gift of renewal. And finally, on Sunday the February the 20th, at our 10am communion service, there will be an opportunity to receive prayer for wholeness and healing. I will speak on ministering shalom. An introductory leaflet and the sermon for each week will be available on the website. And so, a moment of silence before we begin our worship. The love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We dwell in him and he lives in us. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. And speak of all his marvellous works. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect for today. God, our Creator, who in the beginning commanded the light to shine out of darkness, we pray that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ may dispel the darkness of ignorance and unbelief, shine into the hearts of all your people, and reveal the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the word of Christ dwell in you richly. May the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. We listen to today's reading. A reading from the second letter of St Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 4. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed, and so I spoke. We also believe, and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose hope. Even though our outward nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day after day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at things what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, 
but what cannot be seen is eternal. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One day, while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby. They had come from every village of Galilee and Judea, and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Just then, some men came, carrying a paralysed man on a bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven you. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, Who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questioning, he answered them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easy to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of God has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralysed, I say to you, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. Immediately he stood up before them, took what he had been lying on, and went to his home, glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them, and they glorified God, and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of each heart be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as Linda has already said, we begin a series of four Sunday morning sermons exploring wholeness and healing from a Christian perspective. I wrote about that in the January edition of our parish news and you can read that article on our church website. Health includes, of course, our bodies, our minds, our spirits, our relationship with God, our loved ones and neighbours. We might ask if we have a healthy relationship with the environment and with our planet, or how healthy we are as a nation or even as a race. These are huge areas and we couldn't possibly do justice to all of these realities over four short weeks. So I hope that as a starting point we can focus on our own experience of what it means for us personally to be healthy or unhealthy, whether physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. Many of us in this community are living with ageing and how that affects areas of our life. We may live with pain which might be chronic or intermittent. We may have concerns about our mental or emotional well-being. Certainly Covid has heightened this, while for some Living with persistent stress may make us feel unwell. Or we may have spiritual issues, perhaps through false ideas about God, or guilt, or besetting sins, or attitudes that we nurse but long to be freed from. Perhaps we find it hard to forgive or to be forgiven. All of us live with realities in our own lives that diminish our sense of health. We all experience weakness. But God is concerned 
about those areas in our lives. And through our faith, we have resources we can draw on to help us. This is what we want to explore. And so today, I want us to say something about wholeness. One or two further points. First, there is nothing wacky or magical about the Christian healing ministry. It is what I would call a normal part of Christian discipleship. In fact, healing is part of our regular ministry of prayer. We do it every Sunday in the prayers of intercession. Second, there is nothing exclusive about prayer for healing. There is something, of course, distinctive. We pray in the name of Jesus. But God is the God of all health and all creation. So there is a partnership between what the church does and what the medical and caring professions do. And some of you have had careers in those very professions. This is all part of the loving wisdom that God has given to the human race. Third, I don't have healing taped. As with all prayer, we are dealing with a mystery. God can give us many gifts. From my own experience over my ordained ministry, some in receiving prayer have experienced a wonderful sense of God's love and presence. Some have received gifts of strength and courage. Some have spoken of a new sense of peace and acceptance. And in my experience, very occasionally, some have witnessed to physical healing. But perhaps most of all, whether we feel anything or not, is a new sense, a new grasp that God cares for every part of our lives. Our problem is that often we think that our faith has nothing to do with these lived realities. But the ministry of Jesus shows that God really does care for us. And Jesus continues his ministry today through the Holy Spirit, through the healing professions, and through the ministry of the church. I'd like to explore the Hebrew word shalom. It's a word that Jewish people still use when they greet each other. Of course, it means peace. Peace be with you. It was Jesus' first Easter word to his disciples. But it is a deep word. It carries with it the idea of harmony and integration at all levels of our being. Peace with God. Peace with each other. Peace within our hearts and our lives. So, peace be with you is a kind of prayer. If you feel afflicted in any way, in your body, in your mind or in your spirit, we can pray for shalom, asking God to minister to this sense of affliction. We can think of Jesus as the bringer of shalom. Let's briefly consider this morning's readings. In 2 Corinthians 4, Paul says, We do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day after day. Paul here is realistic. We are mortal. Our bodies over the years grow old and one day we will all die. But he contrasts that with this remarkable statement that day by day our 
inner nature, our spirit, is being renewed, made new. As the body gets older, the spirit becomes younger. This renewal is a gift from God. It's essentially what we pray for when we pray for healing grace. As we feel God's living and eternal presence deep within us. Today's Gospel is the brilliant passage about the man who was paralysed. That man had some great friends who decided to carry him on his stretcher to Jesus. But such was the crowd, they could get nowhere near the house where Jesus was speaking. But these friends were can-do friends. So they carried him up to the roof and began to dig through it. Imagine the scene inside, Jesus is speaking. Suddenly there is noise above, first dust, then debris as the tiles are removed. Suddenly daylight appears above, a six-foot hole and a stretcher being lowered to Jesus' feet. But what did Jesus say? He said something remarkable. My son, your sins are forgiven. And there was outrage. This was blasphemy. Only God can forgive. Now let me make one thing absolutely clear. There is no connection here between the man's sin and his paralysis. What the passage is saying to us is that Jesus sees us in our totality as human beings. The man wanted to be able to walk again. But Jesus could see that he also had a deeper need to know that God loves him and forgives him. So Jesus responds to prove that he has authority on earth to forgive sins. He says, get up, take up your mat and walk. And the man did just that. We might say there are two healings here. The man first received forgiveness and then he was raised up. Now he has shalom. Peace in his body, yes, but also peace in his spirit deep within his heart. And I want you to notice his friends brought him to Jesus. Jesus commends their faith. They were the ones who believed in Jesus' healing love. So we can come on behalf of others. So on February the 20th, as well as prayer for yourself, you may wish in heart and mind to bring someone you care for to the Lord and receive prayer on their behalf. God is not limited. So what's going on here? Well, ultimately, we will be healed when we enter the life of heaven, when we live in the eternal kingdom of God. But Jesus came to show that in him, God's kingdom, God's ultimate shalom, had broken into human time. Jesus' healing show what happens when God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. And whenever we experience and know Christ's shalom, whether in our bodies, or our minds, or our spirits, 
we experience now a foretaste of what one day we will know fully and perfectly. And that gift is what sustains us as we grow towards our ultimate wholeness. But it's not all in the future. It is a reality we can know in part now. Each week when we worship, the presiding minister declares that your sins are forgiven. Each week we pray for healing in the intercessions as we remember those among us who are sick. Each week we share Christ's peace, his shalom, with each other. And in the sacrament we receive the risen life of Jesus himself. For Jesus is the man of peace, the giver of shalom. So peace be with you. So let us think about what we have heard and how we can take that into our lives this week. So let us pray. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We, we praise, praise and bless you, Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We, we praise and bless you, Lord. God, the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We, we praise, praise and bless you, Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We, we praise, praise and bless you, Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured or disabled that they may be made whole. Hear Lord us, Lord of life. Grant to all who are lonely, anxious or depressed a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear, Hear us, Lord of life. Grant to all who minister to those who are suffering wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear, Hear us, Lord of life. Mend broken relationships, and restore to those in, in distress soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of life. Sustain and support those who seek your guidance, and lift up all who are brought low by the trials of this life. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the peace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear, Hear us, Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear, Hear us, Lord of life. You are the Lord who does mighty wonders. You, you have, have declared your powers among the peoples. With you, Lord, is the well of life. And in, in your light do we see light. light. Hear us, Lord of life. Heal, Heal us and, and make us whole. And so we pray, O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of our souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So thank you for joining with us for our service this morning. If you feel that you would like to join us in person, we meet at 10 a.m. for communion on a Wednesday and a Sunday morning. You would be most welcome. Church is open every day from 9.30 to 4.15. If you'd like to come in, light a candle, reflect in a quiet space. As we end our time of worship, we ask that we may know the Lord's presence in all that we do this coming week. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs>